Alright, so I'm back with another installment of stuff that I like to cook. Well, today it's kind of cold outside and I was feeling kind of like I wanted some comfort food. So, I'm happy to go shopping today. I wanted to uh, pick up some stuff for some meatloaf. So I'm going to do meatloaf and mashed potatoes, except without the potatoes. As you know, we'll just substitute the cauliflower mash, but my style. So, over here is pretty much everything you're going to need. Salt, pepper, um, onion, garlic, uh, Cholula, that's for the mashed potatoes. Honey, that's going to be for a glaze for the, um, for the meatloaf. And then today I decided to throw in a little twist and I'm going to add um, some sausage to my meatloaf. So let's get started. First things first, in my bowl here, I have uh, one carrot, finely diced, as you can see. And with that, I have two mushrooms, and I'm going to add one more mushroom. My mushroom is going to act like my binder, as opposed to me using flour, breadcrumbs, or rolled oats. Um, nice, easy way to go ahead and chop my mushrooms. I am going to slice them and then slice them some more. So first things first, I'm gonna get one nice slice here. If you don't feel all that comfortable with your knife skills, turn it onto that nice flat side. There you go, that's the first cut. Stack them all up, you can do this in bunches if you want. Now I'm just gonna chop them up again. So I get a nice, kind of like matchstick potato, matchstick uh, mushrooms. I'm gonna go ahead and add that to my bowl. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add my onion. This is half an onion right here. I'm going to go ahead and chop another half of an onion. I'm going to use that for some of my cauliflower mashed and uh, the other half of my cauliflower mashed and the rest of it for the meatloaf. So, best way to cut that. Alrighty. So, first things first, here's my root side. Um, you can cut all the way through the root or whatever. I'm going to keep that side here. So this is the top of the onion. I'm going to go ahead and like a nice little claw here. Go ahead and make some vertical cuts. You can make them as big or as small as you want. It just depends on the size of the dice that you're looking for. So from here, I have some nice vertical cuts, and then I'm going to go ahead and put a couple horizontal cuts in. Easy cheesy. And then I'm going to go ahead, slice it up. And there we end up with a nice fine dice. That last piece, that's still shaped like a half moon, I'm going to cut into probably three or four horizontal cuts, and then go ahead and rock my knife. Alrighty. Now I'm just going to reserve some for my cauliflower mash. It's about half the rest of that onion, so it's about, oh, three quarters of a pretty good size, big apple size onion. Okay. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and add my meat. Now you can do pretty much whatever you want in your meatloaf. Ground beef happened to be on sale today. You can use ground turkey, 99% fat-free ground turkey, a combination of beef, veal, and turkey, bison, whatever. Whatever you feel like having that particular day. Go for it. Get my glove on. I don't like to touch raw meat.
Go ahead and plop that in. Now I'm going to take the meat out of two sausage links and add that in because, I mean, really, honestly, I love anything encased. Sausage being encased, and we all know I love pork, so pork, sausage, delicious. Go ahead and add one. If you just notice, I'm just scoring the skin. That way I can just break the, the meat away from the skin. It's quite easy. And these are uncooked sausages. You can get whatever you want. You don't have to add the sausage. But like I said, I love pork. And I love sausage. We've got our meat in here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of my ingredients for my meatloaf. One egg. This is gonna be another part of the binder. Again, I crack it on a flat surface as opposed to on the corner. The likelihood of you getting shells in your food is a lot less. You can beat it up before, or whatever. I'm not gonna worry about it. Worcestershire sauce. Probably, I don't know, half a teaspoon. Salt and pepper to taste. One more thing I forgot to add in here, some chopped garlic. About two cloves. I have some more reserved for my cauliflower mashed as well. Now we're just gonna mix it up. All right, now that it's all mixed, I'm gonna go ahead and add it into my pan. I haven't greased it or anything, there's enough, gonna be enough fat in the meat to go ahead and keep it nice and moist. I'm just gonna go ahead and press it into my pan. So here's what it looks like right now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make a little glaze to go on top. Um, I've actually changed the recipe a little bit. We used to use a uh, um, brown sugar, but I'm going to cut the sugar. I'm just going to use basically a tablespoon of, of honey and I'm going to keep everything else the same. So we have a tablespoon of honey, a quarter cup of vinegar, uh, an eighth of a teaspoon of ground mustard, and again some more Worcestershire sauce. Once I have all those components in my bowl here, I can either throw it in the microwave or I could put it um, over the stove. I just want to go ahead and melt that honey to make that nice glaze. Now if you notice, my honey is nice and melted. I'm just going to go ahead and spoon this over the top. The consistency is a little bit different than um, what I had growing up as a kid, but it'll be just as tasty. preheated my oven over here for 350. Um, my rack is in the middle. I have it on a baking dish just in case. Um, and I'm going to throw it in the oven for about 50 minutes. Okay, so in the meantime, I am going to go ahead and start cooking my cauliflower. I know it seems a little bit early, but the beauty of this cauliflower mash recipe, it's kind of more like a gratin. So I am just going to